All right, welcome back. So on deck today is another 9mm ballistics test. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at a round that's been around for quite a while and has quite a bit of uh, what would be known as street cred or street credentials. Uh, it has a fairly strong following with uh, those that have used it in law enforcement. I know some well-known na well names that still recommend it and are still carrying it. Uh, and as far as I know, it is still being issued to uh, law enforcement agencies in the country. I believe Orlando PD has used this for quite a long time, and I believe they have stuck with it the entire time. So, uh, again, it does seem to have a good reputation with those that have used it. So, what is it? It is a 9mm 127 grain plus P plus Ranger T series, the RA9TA. So, uh, this is t current 2019 production, so any changes that have gone to, into the uh, bullet design over the years should be in this production lot. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to fire it over the chronograph through our uh, Glock 26 with 3.5 inch uh, factory barrel, our G19 with the factory threaded barrel, uh, so this will be the same barrel length as the G17, and the MP5 to see what kind of increase in velocity we get with that longer barrel, it's approximately a 9 inch barrel. Uh, and also we want to see how that may affect terminal performance. So. Uh, after the chronograph, we're going to fire it in our standard one-gallon water jugs uh, with the FBI heavy clothing barrier. We'll start out with the G26, and then we'll hit it with the uh, what would be a G17. Uh, and then we'll do a bear jug shot, if all goes well anyway. We'll do a bear jug shot um, with the uh, MP5 to stress the bullet to the max to see uh, what happens with, if the velocity is juiced up. Uh, does it overdrive the round or not? So basically what we want to see is, does this round live up to its reputation? All right, so let's go ahead and get it going. First up will be the G26. 1244. 1201. 1266. 1240. And 1256. All right, our low was 1201. Our high was 1266. And our average was 1241. I believe this round on the box was rated for 1250. So out of a G26, we're only nine feet per second off for an average. So yeah, all right, let's check out what would be a G17. All right, this will be the four and a half inch factory threaded barrel. 1304, 1271, 1280, 1317, and 1315. All right. Our low was 1271, our high was 1317, and our average was 1297. So we're exceeding those published velocities from a four and a half inch barrel by a fairly good margin at that. Uh, so that's interesting. All right, let's see what the MP5 does. This will be the MP5, uh, approximately a nine inch barrel. 1428. 1418, 1427, 1423, and 1296. Hmm. Rather low. All right. Our low was 1296, our high was 1428, and our average was 1398. Um, that was kind of low on that one reading. That might have been a crony fairy tale because uh, it seemed like every other shot was above 1,400 feet per second. Um, so, but hey, you never know. Either way, uh, it was still moving along at 1,300 feet per second. But uh, one thing I could say is I noticed a good bit of back pressure with this uh, suppressor using this ammo. Uh, so it definitely is juiced up a little bit on the pressure. But uh, all right, let's get to the terminal portion. So this is a setup. We have our FBI heavy clothing kit, uh, followed by our standard five inch thick water jugs, uh, one gallon water jugs. And what we typically see is 1.5 times penetration uh, as that of what you'd see in ordnance gel. So what we are hoping to get is penetration to the back of jug four, sort of as the baseline minimum. That way we know we exceeded the 12 inches. Uh, if we punch through four, that's okay. We have a six inch jug backing that. Uh, so. I don't want to waste these uh, five inch thick jugs. They're a little harder to come by. Uh, but anyway, if we make it into jug five, that's fine as long as we got some expansion. And if we blow through all this, it probably means we got little to no expansion. Uh, so we have our catch box here uh, so we can find out what went awry if that occurs. All right, let's get it going. So first up will be a 3.5 inch barrel of the G26. Let's go see. 
So we have jug one, two, three, exit on three, entry into four. Uh, looks like a good crack on four. We may have made it into five. I don't see it in four. Yes, it's in five. All right, let me dig that out and see what it looks like. And there it is. Uh, it didn't make it to the back of jug five. It just made it in. So we easily exceeded the 12 inch uh, mark we were looking for. Uh, and it is fairly well expanded. Uh, it, it's not fully expanded like uh, you would think, but then again, this is a 3.5 inch barrel, but it is fairly well expanded. And the talons on this uh, variant are actually uh, in a position to possibly uh, help give a more complete crush cavity. They're not folded back against the shank. So um, pretty interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, G17 length barrel to see if that added velocity uh, peels this back more and uh, how that affects things. This will be the four and a half inch barrel. Let's go take a look. All right, jug one and two. Uh, this looks like it probably expanded more by the uh, hydraulic pressure there, uh, destroying uh, those first two jugs. Three into four and <laughs> ah, there it is. Stuck in the back of jug four and uh, just stuck in the five. I'll go ahead and try to pull that out of there so we can see what it looks like. Uh, and there it is. Uh, well expanded. Uh, again, the talons are uh, in a position that they might actually help contribute to the crush cavity. They aren't folded all the way back against the shank. Uh, doesn't look like it lost any weight. I will put weights and measurements uh, in the description now at the bottom of the, uh, of the video. Uh, but yeah, so far, uh, penetration was spot on. Uh, that was about perfect. Uh, probably be looking about 14 or so inches, maybe getting close to 15, 14, 15 inches of penetration there. Um, so yeah, good expansion, excellent penetration. Let's go ahead and throw it through the MP5 into the bear test and see if that extra velocity and no barrier uh, starts to uh, peel things apart too much. This will be a bear test, no barrier with the MP5. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look. All right, <laughs> pretty obvious we got expansion. One, two, and I don't see fragments. Three, a dent crack on the back of three, uh, and it's in jug three. So let me dig it out and see what it looks like. Uh, and there it is, perfectly expanded. Now the talons are folded back against the shank, uh, so those evil scary talons probably aren't gonna do anything in this case. However, the round is fully expanded, and it doesn't look like it lost much weight, if any. Uh, the round penetrated to the back of jug three with a good crack on the back of three. And that is pretty typical when we launch these at higher velocity with no barrier. That's fairly typical to come up short and not make it into jug four. Uh, but it would it would put you right on the brink of the 12 inch mark. Uh, it, di it didn't grossly under expand. It, it would have been right there. Uh, so overall, even at that higher velocity, this does appear to be a fairly heavy constructed bullet. So since this did well overall, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a round through the G17 length barrel through four layers of denim, since that is a tougher barrier than the FBI heavy clothing test. Uh, and in the past, I've seen some reports of this round having some trouble in that barrier. So let's do that just, uh, just for GP. So be a G17 length barrel through four layers of denim. Let's go take a look. Okay, and the hollow point cavity plugged, which uh, is pretty much exactly what I've seen uh, in other tests. So uh, we've seen this occur with other duty ammunition uh, that's that's stoutly constructed. Uh, some sometimes they seem to struggle with that four layers of denim, at least the four layers of denim that I'm using. Uh, so, I, well, let's take it back to tailgate, and uh, we'll talk about it some more. All right, so some final thoughts on the Ranger T-Series 127 grain plus P plus. Um, well, not getting expansion in the four layers of denim is not uh, not really all that surprising given how stoutly constructed this bullet appears to be. Uh, and that pair of jeans that I have uh, that I usually use for that, it, they are quite thick. Uh, and we've seen some, some good duty ammunition in the past uh, sort of struggle with that barrier as well. However, just like in the past, we've also seen uh, in the FBI heavy clothing test, the round actually performs quite well. 
Uh, so what's the takeaway? Terminally, this round has what it takes to be an effective law enforcement projectile. Uh, the expansion uh, is there. The penetration, particularly that penetration we got from the uh, G19 uh, with the 17 in, uh, Glock 17 barrel, uh, was spot on. That, that's just about perfect. Uh, and the expansion is quite good. The expansion profile would uh, lead to an effective crush cavity. So from a terminal ballistics point of view, this round does appear to have what it takes to be an effective law enforcement projectile, and that's probably why it has a pretty de uh, good street reputation is because i see no reason for it not to now the drawback <laughs> well it's plus p plus <laughs> uh the recoil is uh, on the high end for nine millimeter not quite to 40 yet but on the high end of nine millimeter uh and if you're used to shooting like standard uh blazer brass and lower lower power target loads like that you there will be a noticeable difference in uh in recoil uh so uh probably a better companion if you are carrying this will be something like this nine millimeter nato uh that winchester offers uh and a side note in, uh, on that so there's no more large warning labels on the plus b plus uh boxes like they used to do where it would say not for uh, retail sale, use only in handguns, and so on and so forth and so forth. Uh, now it's just a small warning on the side of the box, and you actually have to kind of look for it. And it actually says, use only in modern firearms in good condition. Do not use in Uzi firearms. These cartridges are loaded to higher pressure for greater velocity. Average pressure is 20 to 25% higher than industry standard pressure for 9mm. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if Winchester's just being a bit conservative on that or if that's the actual pressure they're loading these to. Uh, Underwood Ammo supposedly uh, loads its 9mm plus B plus, at least um, in my talking with them, to 39,000 PSI, uh, which would be uh, uh, a little over 10% over uh, SAMI standard pressure, but it would exceed the 38.5. Uh, max for plus P. Uh, if Winchester's actually loading these 20 to 25 percent higher, they could be in excess of 40,000 PSI. So I'm not so sure on those numbers, but that's what they put on the box. An interesting thing to point out is on the side of the box marked NATO, use only in modern 9mm firearms in good condition. These cartridges are loaded to military velocity and pressure. Average pressure is 10 to 15% higher than industry pressure for 9mm Luger. Now, if that is to be believed, that means that these, uh, the 9mm NATO loaded by Winchester is actually could potentially be in the plus P plus territory as 10% over uh, is the max for plus P. Uh, and as an additional side note, the newest 9mm ball ammunition Winchester's putting out, the uh, the new military loading, I believe it's called the Active Duty line, they're actually selling it uh, just, just like normal, like target ammo, is actually supposed to be loaded in excess of 39,000 PSI. It is a 115 grain projectile um, at over 1,300 feet per second, which if you think back to 9mm BPLE, sounds pretty familiar. So uh, Winchester is loading and marketing uh rounds that appear to potentially obviously when they're marked par, uh, plus p plus it's obvious uh to exceed sammy pressure specs of plus p though not always marking it as such uh so i find that kind of interesting so i don't know if maybe it's just uh, over the years modern firearms maybe they found out the plus p plus is not really that big of a deal uh maybe they figure most people aren't shooting it enough to to really worry about the increased wear it might put on your weapon However, that's uh, that's for you guys to decide. So would I carry this ammo? Uh, well, I did purchase a decent amount of it, uh, mainly because I found it at a, at a really good price. Uh, and I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and test this out. I'm sure some folks would like to see this. Uh, and if I was currently carrying this ammunition on duty or uh, as a civilian self-defense, um, I wouldn't feel inadequately armed at all. Uh, it, it has what it takes to be an effective law enforcement projectile so far as a terminal performance. Except one thing we haven't tried yet, and it'll be in the next video. I want to put this one through the car windshield. So I'm going to bring the car windshield back out. Uh, we're going to try to put this round through there. Uh, we're going to bring the G2 Gold Dot back out because uh, of the issue we had with the uh, jugs that we fired through on that day. Um, so we can get some better penetration results. And we're going to bring out a 180 grain 40 cal HST. So I'm sure a lot of folks kind of want to see that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, try to make that happen. And if everything goes okay and we have the materials and everything else, we might even bring out a 10 millimeter. So, but that'll be in the next video and hopefully not too far down the road. So if you haven't already done so, guys, please like and subscribe, share the video. It helps the channel out.
go ahead and comment down below tell me what you guys think about this are any of you guys issued this ammunition currently are you carrying it currently you know what are your thoughts about this and the plus p plus genre in general and as always guys i appreciate the comments but please keep those comments professional and i'll see you guys next time